Thank you very much for the introduction. Um, first of all, I would like to thank the organizers for giving me the opportunity to be here today. Uh, I'm going to talk about using optical spectroscopy to investigate polysulfide in lithium sulfur batteries. Uh, this is a, a project that we are, we are doing in collaboration with Greg's group and also Oxys Energy. So the attraction of using UVVIS absorption is that, in principle, we can measure all the polysulfides that, we, that we're interested in. And in, in principle, we can also uh, quantify the concentration in solution of these polysulfides. So ideally, what we would like to do is to have a probe to um, measure the, the composition of the electrolyte. And this means that we have to distinguish all the tens of polysulfides that we, that we are dealing with. We would like to do this as a, as a function of state of charge. So ideally, we would like to, to have an inoperando technique and as we've seen with the, with the previous speaker, it's really handy to have a, a spatial resolution for your measurement. So in this presentation, I'm going to show you so, some of our preliminary results on how we are we're trying to approach this. OK, so if we look at the literature uh, and, we, and we try to think on how to calibrate IUVVIS measurement, we can see, for example, from this paper by, by Kanyas, that it, it's fairly simple to do this for, for sulfur and for lithium sulfide Li2S. Um, so we can do a concentration-dependent absorption measurement. But as soon as we consider all the other polysulfides, we can see that the spectra of these nominally different uh, solutions is, act is actually quite similar. So we have similar peak positions. And this is consistent with the idea that as soon as you prepare your solution, you will have this proportionation. And so you end up with, with a composition which is different from what you intended uh, to, to have initially. This is just another example from another paper where, where we can see that the, the absorption spectrum is actually changing in time uh, after the preparation of the solution. And these are just some of the disproportionation reactions that, that are proposed to explain, to explain this. So if we cannot do an experimental uh, calibration, another thing that can be done, like in this case by, by Cavase et al., is to, is to calculate the absorption spectrum. And so this is a TDDFT study where indeed they could, they could sort of, uh, find a, an estimated UVV spectrum for all the species that they, they, they looked at, and then they compared this to ex to UVV's measurement. Um, the, other, the other problem here is that we, we know that if we go for ex situ uh, measurements, we, we might still have problems with disproportionation because obviously uh, you cannot really do it. Um, it it's not an in situ, yeah, by definition. So, what we really are, are looking at here is a, is, a, is a problem where we would like to, to probe in situ and, and potentially in operando. And this very nice paper by Patel, Patel et al. showed that if you carefully design a cell which enables you to, to access the, uh, the, the, the inner part of your, of your cell, you can do optical spectroscopy. And in this case, they, they've been looking at uh, reflectance. And as, as they show in the study, it is actually possible to do this as a function of state of charge. And they can, they can estimate by looking at the first derivative uh, of the reflectance uh, some sort of coarse um, speciation of the polysulfide composition in, inside the, the electrolyte as a function of state of charge. So this is quite nice. However, reflectance is slightly trickier to interpret compared, for example, to transmission mode optical spectroscopy, which is exactly what we are thinking of. So as, I, as I've showed you, um, beside the attraction of using UVVs as a fairly simple technique um, to, to tackle this problem, we have a, a number of challenges. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show you how we are, we are trying to address these. So what we're thinking is to look at a, what we call a lateral battery. So the device that, we, that, that I'm going to present on is basically composed by a lithium and sulfur electrode that sit next to each other. Uh, and th there's a gap in between where we can hopefully uh, when we, while, while we measure electrically, access the optical properties of. So this reminds me of, of what Elizabeth Miller has presented yesterday, and, and it's called a cross-sectional battery. Uh, and so the idea is that if we, if we can do this, then we can, we can really have a, a transmission mode optical spectroscopy characterization technique. And if we focus our beam, it is also possible to do some mapping, which we've seen from the previous speaker is actually quite a, a useful thing to do. Um, OK, so this is. One of the devices that, that Peter Kovacic in, uh, in Oxys Energy has, has made for us. And so we, we, we can see that we have the lithium and sulfur uh, contacts on, 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 the, on the same substrate. And then we seal the cell in a way that we can sort of control the thickness of the cell. 
Um, so these are some of the details on, on, of, of how the, the cell is made. However, we need to be cautious uh, at taking these numbers because we are not really sure to what extent the electrolyte is actually penetrating inside the, the sulfur contact, given that the cell that we, are, that we are dealing with is very thin. So the, 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 real, the real key feature of this, of this device, even if it's not particularly relevant to practical applications just yet, is that we can tune the optical thickness of the gap and we can therefore access uh, this optical information that we're looking for. Uh, so if we do normal UVV spectroscopy for measuring the, the gap of the, of the device, this is what we obtain. And so if we look at the, at the peak position just by, by fitting Gaussians, we can, we can see two main features at, at around 355 nanometers and 478 nanometers. Uh, here's the problem. Uh, how can we then uh, assign this to, to different polysulfides. Well, if we look at the literature and, 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 and the, the position of the peaks, this is really depending on the solvent, obviously, but it's not even, there's not, that's not clear agreement. So really, what, we, what we're interested in, in doing here is qualitatively looking at what happens at this peak in terms of amplitude and, and shift. However, speciation is still a big challenge, and we're still in the process of understanding how to tackle this. So um, when we apply an electrical measurement to, 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 to this device. In this case, I'm, I'm, I'm applying a, about two microamps discharging current, which we estimate should be something like C over 500, but this is a, that there's obviously an error bar on this, on this, on this number. Uh, we can see that there's quite a, a big drop in potential, and this is consistent with what, what we expect, given the very high series resistance of, of a device uh, fabricated like this. Um, Nevertheless, we, we, we try to monitor the absorbance of, of the device as a function of, of discharge, and what we can see is that indeed we can measure an inoperando UVB spectroscopy for the electrolyte um, as a function of, 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 of time in this case, and we can also apply slightly higher current, but as you can see, we go even negative in voltage. So this is obviously uh, consistent with the idea that series resistance is increasing as a function of of, of, of discharge um, and any sort of like a proof of concept for this particular, for this, for this technique. Um, the, the next step that we are, yeah, so, so we, go, we go negative, but, that, but that's sort of expected. Um, we can now try uh, uh, to, to cycle the cell and I'm gonna present data where we are, we're actually reaching very, very shallow depth of, of discharge. Um, and what we would like to do is in this case to focus our optical beam and actually try to scan uh, as a function of position and see what the spectra that we see look like. So this is the, the mapping, the UVVs mapping that we obtain for this cell. And I'm gonna use this color code for the next slides as well. So the, the red curves will correspond to regions that are close to the lithium contact, whereas the, the blue curves will be would be close to the sulfur, whereas the green are, are sort of in the middle. So we can see that there are some, some sort of dodgy profiles I have to anticipate that some of these devices shows, show some, some bubbles inside, so we're still working on optimizing the, in, the injection of the electrolyte inside of the device, and this, this, this is potentially one of the problems uh, that we see here. So these curves are, are about 60 micron uh, distant apart from, from each other, and I estimate the resolution of the system, the optical resolution to be in the order of 50 to 100 microns. So, I'm going to show you now some snapshots from a, from a, a, a discharge curve, and, and then I'm going to comment on them. So this is basically what we see. We see an evolution of the spectra as a function of time. So this is obviously a lot of information. So I'm going to show you how we process this data. And we, we, we do a very qualitative uh, analysis for now. So we, we do a peak fitting, so we two Gaussians, and I'm going to show you what, what we see for the, for the peak that, that we observe in the visible. So at time equals zero for the data that I've showed you earlier, we see that the distribution is fairly homogeneous in terms of peak wavelength and uh, the peak amplitude. And so at very early times, what we observe is that interestingly there's some activity happening at both the lithium and the sulfur electrode. And so we see a, a blue shift for this peak and also an increase in the amplitude of the, of the absorbance. And then when we go to later time scale, this activity at the lithium seems to decrease, um, whereas the one in the sulfur, as we expect, is actually increasing. 
And then when we, when we do this analysis for all the, day, the, other, the other time frames, uh, we can see that yeah, this trend seems to continue and we seem to, to reach also some sort of steady state where the, the, the peak wavelength is more or less in the same position and also the amplitude is more or less the same position over this, this time scale. So the, after, after, after this short discharge in this experiment, we, we let the, the cell relax. And what we can see when we go to open circuit is actually it takes thousands of seconds for, for the voltage to actually go back to a, to a reasonable volume. And for this particular experiment, we, we, we just waited uh, about an hour. And, and the relaxation, during the relaxation time, we see that something happens. So there's, there's some sort, sort of redistribution of the polysulfide and also a shift in the peak of, of, of the absorption window. Uh, but this is not enough to actually redistribute all the polysulfides within the cell. So obviously, we need to design an experiment that is actually matching the design of, of, of the cell. So I'm just going to show, show you just out of interest the, what we see during the discharge. But obviously, we're not starting from, a, from an equilibrium condition. And what we see is that, indeed, uh, the, the, this absorption window seems to go down, which is consistent with the, the formation of, of sulfur at the, at the cathode. So I'm going to conclude here just to, just to show you that we, we, we have tackled, we, we think that we, we successfully tackled two of the challenges that, that um, sort of are, are on the way to, to having a, a mapping technique that uses uh, UV visible spectroscopy. We're now thinking of how to improve the design of our device because obviously, as I said, it's not particularly relevant for practical application at the moment. But we believe that optical, that transmission spectroscopy can actually be quite powerful because um, speciation of intermediate polysulfide is actually something that cannot be easily done with other techniques as we've seen during this conference. So with this, I just would like to acknowledge um, colleagues at Imperial College. So Pierce Barnes, Jenny Nelson, James Sample, group of uh, Greg Offer and discussion, useful discussion with Tang and also people from, from Oxys, Peter and, uh, and Garrett. And thank you for your attention. Thank you, Dr. Open for questions. Yeah, thank you very much for the talk. I, it's, it's just me, but I didn't get how is your cell design. You are measuring in transmission, so you have, can you explain how sure. the beam goes? Sure, so, so we have a, a glass substrate where we have we spatter two contacts, you know, and then we, we deposit the, the lithium and the sulfur on, on these respective uh, contacts. And then there's a transparent window in between. Yeah? And so we scan laterally over this transparent window. Yeah? So, so it's, it's, a, it's a very large gap that we're looking at, about two millimeters. And we focus the beam <coughs> to about a 50 to 100 micron size. And then we scan from the, sulf from the, well, the lithium contact to the sulfur. So there is no separation, right? No, 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 no. So it's only the electron. Um, what's like the rough area of the lithium and the sulfur facing one another? Because if your gap is two millimeter, then I expect the electrodes themselves to be not thicker than two millimeters, right? No, no, they're, they're about 50 microns. And What's, what's the loading, like roughly? Loading? Of sulfur? Uh, so we're, we're between 2 to 1 to 4 to 1. We think something like this. But as I said, it depends on how much of the sulfur or of the sulfur electrode is actually penetrated by the electrolyte, which we don't know at the moment. Because it really depends on whether just the edges of this contact are, are, are contributing or whether the bulk is actually doing something as well. Because we squeeze the context in between these two glass lights and we inject the electrolyte and obviously if penetration is not, is not fast enough after the sealing there would be no chance for the electrolyte to go uh, inside the solver. So this is a, yeah, thank it's you. a, thank you. Okay, thank you very much.